Welcome back to the Charles Ergen Experience. Back. Ah, <sighs> careful, Kelbell's hot. It's hot. It's careful. Hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, Good to see you. Welcome back so Thanks, soon man. as well. So we did one on Saturday. After. Today is Monday. Can't keep me away from but the gym. the fans have questions. Do they? Remember to like and subscribe, everybody. Whoa, this looks like it's very loud. Anyway. It's looking good. It is looking good. It's Remember, good. like, so subscribe, good. YouTube, Spotify, top left-hand corner. If you're listening on Spotify, rate that right now. Subscribe if you're listening on YouTube. If you're watching this on TV, go on your phone, subscribe. Or you can even do that on the remote. You can click like. Do all that now. Buy DVDs. Yeah, buy, buy my DVDs. DVD. Buy, yeah. That leads me nicely into my next question, which is... Yeah. Uh, so, someone asked about high-stepping. Let's just get straight into the jiu-jitsu, eh? Let's go. Whilst I'm advertising a DVD. Someone Let's asked about high-stepping and that sort of stuff. Yeah, with someone's in your half guard. And someone else asked about self-framing. Self-framing is in the new DVD, Sloppy Seconds. Oh, okay. High-stepping. Like, with all these questions? Defending that is in the new, is in the old DVD, Half Butterfly, and the new DVD, some portions of it. Great. So you can find that there. Great. What an, what a, what an advert that was. I'm That's sure great. I will make a lot of money from that. If I was an avid listener and I was sending in questions about those topics, I would go, I'm going to buy that DVD. And I would watch Actually, that DVD. Actually, maybe. I would be like, Actually okay, fair. that makes sense. I've heard him answer it on the podcast because we'll probably answer a bit later. Oh, yes. And then you go, it's going to be in the DVD. And you go, oh, you go, it's in the DVD. And you go, hmm, maybe I'll buy that DVD. Yeah. And you go, oh my God, BGFNX also Hold has on. a sale. Yeah, that's, I might as well that's buy that. how logic would and if you get the, the app, Honey, it'll give you a discount code. Anyway. Great. What a that? time Google we've had. Google Chrome on Honey. Man. Honey? Yeah. Big fan. Uh, it'll give you discount codes, for, especially for BJJ Fanatics. It's always running discount codes. Anyway, get the DVD. Get the fucking DVD. Get the fucking questions out. Get the DVD. Let's get buy straight into the, it. In fact, buy the DVD, whether or not it's on the daily deal. Because either way, there's plenty of value. Pay. There's plenty. plenty of value. Think about it. One private is like, expensive but the dvd is cheap yeah the dvd is hours of fun one private is barely fun at all <laughs> all right then uh let's start with a question that you would like to answer give it to me uh if you are between two weight divisions do you think it's better to cut down or bulk up oh, I, I, I don't know oh. i don't know <sighs> fuck oh, i thought this i thought i was gonna like this question between the weight two weight divisions it yeah. depends how much you need to cut uh, so let's say he's like halfway between let's say he wants to do between 77 or 88 I'd be like and he weighs 80 kilos push to no, 80 not even 82 kgs uh, yeah it depends very if much you, that's what you did you were at, the, you were at 78 79 yeah. yeah I was like 81 ish I'd push because 81 you, I would push but 79 I'd go down 79 go down Eight, if you're over the eighties, go up. Yeah, and also depends how good your weight cutting is. If you're, if you're, same day. Th this is the main thing. If you're very same day, also still, if you're still fun, it's not same day. Fun. If Eight you're days. very good at cutting weight and you know cutting weight is easy for you and it doesn't affect your performance, then that may be a good option for you. Find that. Or if you don't have much an idea of how to cut weight effectively and it ruins your energy and you think it's gonna. Uh, take away from your performance you should invest time into putting on weight and go to the bigger division yeah. I highly recommend you do that definitely if it's same day I would not cut large amounts of weight no what way. was it 3% 3% 3%, 3, 3 no more than 3% of your body weight that is same day weight. yep that is an easy answer if it's same day no more than 3% because then you can cut next day no more than uh, he said up to 6 to 6 to 8% well, wow. up to six to eight percent, and that's professionals. That's that's the top cream of the crop. Tier yeah, professionals. The cream six to eight percent of the crop of your body weight. Great question. Yeah. Uh, so just a quick reminder: How can you lose three percent of your body weight in one week for same that. day weigh-in? You reduce, assuming that you already have a high carbohydrate diet and a high fiber diet, being over thirty to forty grams per day. You would start reducing carbohydrates down by fifty percent perhaps more at the start of the week then with two days to go you would reduce fiber down significantly as close to five to ten grams you're not going to get zero but between five and ten grams get that Try down me. it's gonna be hard to shit but you'll get all that fat. you just won't have as much stores in your gut and then 
don't reduce salt. Just do that. Carbs and fiber. Yeah. That's it. There it'll you go. be hard to shit though. It will be. Yeah, it'll be uncomfortable, but you get done. Yeah, fair play. Hard shit's hard. Yeah. All right. Do you train cardio outside of BJJ sparring? And if so, what sort of work do you do? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. I should be more consistent with it each week. Assault bike. I I should as well. That would be great. Yeah. But it's, right now, uh, it's just a bit long. It's a bit long to do it's right now. Long. But it's... But that kind of leads into the nasal one. We had a nasal question. Have yeah. Has the nasal breathing affected you nicely? I have. It's affected me It's affected me a lot. Uh, I started reading a book called Breath. Thank you. By uh, James Neston. <laughs> How's J- it spelled? James Neston. Breath. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, it's an excellent book. Snap. I recommend you get it. What he talks about is why breathing through your nose is important which we already discussed on one podcast for performance, but for actual overall health. Do you know, they did this study where they plugged, they did this study like I think 50 years ago, they got chimps put things in it, like uh, silicone plugs in their nose so they actually couldn't get them out. Yeah. And left them in there for two years and their whole face, so they could only mouth breathe, their whole fra- facial structure changed, their teeth changed, they got fucking like really bad health, blood pressure went through the roof. Like it, mouth breathing is like really bad for you. I notice it most in the morning. You wake up, one nostril's blocked. If you start mouth breathing, that nostril's going to stay blocked, fella. Yeah. You better, you better work that nostril what, early. What he's literally saying is, literally, literally, what, he, what he's saying is the, the tissues in your nose, it's actually erectile tissue, same as the, same, get uh, this. No, really, it's same like tissues that's on like nipples, penis, but. This kind of podcast. This is the best podcast ever. If you don't use it, you lose it. They they will get they will grow stronger, bigger, and have a hypertrophy effect if you can so constantly you can actually make those. gains from sucking in air. Yeah, we should do get, sessions. Get the book Breath. It's very good. I recommend you read it. It's a nice book. It will help you understand why nasal breathing is important. What about living in London compared to living in the countryside? How is that going to affect my cardio? Clean air. Is in, that what you're asking? I quite like London's air. Yeah, but your, really no, your nose is a good filtration system anyway. Is it that good though? Yeah. What about when you're on a tube and the central lines come in and you, you smell cigarettes from down the street? I don't know, mate. Right, just say know. that then. If you don't know, you don't have to lie to him. No, it's true, I don't know. Yeah, all right, we'll cut that. But the question was, how does it affect your performance? You go first. Well, yeah, I just find like at the end of the round, I'm not feeling like I want to rest. I'm more feeling like, ah, oh, you know, I wish I wish that go longer so I could... I could continue working, you know? So it just keeps you more even uh, sort of like energy expenditure throughout the rounds. Mm. Sometimes you've got to rest more, but that's okay. That's part of the acclimatization to the uh, the nasalness. I feel like it's gas me out. I've started doing it in jiu-jitsu now, which is big for me because I'm like a big BPM session. Like get the cardio Enough. up. Yeah. Um, I did it all today, all nasal breathing, very hard. But with a gum, yeah, it's hard. And yeah, a gum shield, yeah. It's hard also to remember because sometimes you'd be nasal and then someone will do a big mistake and you'll just have to, you know, <sighs> scramble and then you realize, fuck, I'm nasal breathing. I mean, mouth breathing, cunt. Got to yeah. get back to it and then you nasal breathe again. Yeah, I, I think it's a, I think it's a bit of a game changer. I'm a big fan of it. I like it. Low hanging fruit. Yeah. Shard. Oh, cardio as well. I'd recommend people do at least one cardio session a week. Shout out Mark McQueen. He does like two. He does a 30-minute row and a interval row. Shout out Mark McQueen. So to answer another question that would come, okay, if you do the extra cardio, what would you do? I'd recommend doing a long piece and then a shorter interval piece. So a long piece could range from 20 to 40 minutes because you want to hit that like zone two, zone three cardio, which is a sustained effort at a pace that's hard to make conversation at. That is really good for your heart, lungs, and building your aerobic capacity. And then you want to do some short, sharp interval stuff working from anywhere between, let's say, 20 seconds up until, I don't know, a minute to 90 seconds. Fuck. With some we rest. We did that. Yeah, we did that. Fuck the 90 seconds. One. Anyway, give me some jits questions that I can answer. Give me okay, some all right. Yeah, yeah, go on. That would be quite funny, actually. Uh, tutorial on how you did the back step from half guard in the next story, please. Go on, answer it then. Go on. Oh, the back step with Sandro. Actually, yes. That was the back step. You're going to teach me that. Yeah. So go on, give us a tutorial. What I'm going to do, I'm going to load, let him load his weight on top of me. Haven't you had the knee shield here? Yep. No? Yeah, all right. 
unhook the leg. Butterfly hook, but yeah, we'll allow. Yeah, sorry, it's a butterfly hook. Sorry, so, sorry, everyone. Yeah. It's a it's a butterfly hook. Going to load his weight, and what I'm going to do? We actually did this position today. I am. Who's showing to it? Joe. Negmont. Nice. I'm going to pull his weight. It's but it can be faster if you answer it. You go right. <laughs> Buy my DVD. That's exactly how you do it. Buy my DVD. In fact, buy the 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 half butterfly one. Give us a test. Nah, right, go, 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 in the thing but on the Sandro one specifically he was going for his fucking das right which he always goes for and he was like overhooking my my elbow so I pulled my elbow back and he pulled himself over the top of me and only then did I switch to the lat and that is how you're gonna get das if you go with Sandro is that you'll be too gung-ho I see it happening already you'll be too gung-ho right he'll have the he'll have the overhook and you'll be like yeah fuck it I'll go anyway no no you gotta get rid of that overhook make him at least be leaning forward and then you go for your lat grip last second and then obviously catch the other leg. Yeah, yeah. patience really. Well, not patience, just get rid set of it. up and then go rather than just go. Rather than, although if you go hard and fast enough, anything will work. <laughs> bit of sarcasm Good that. advice. Yeah. No, no, it's a fact. It is a fact. How, how to counter high stepping. That is the worst spelling ever. Uh, how well to counter high uh, stepping. How to counter high stepping with one P, one P. Oh, ha, H-O-W-W-W. Yes. Anyway, how to counter yeah. high stepping. K-guard, fella. K-guard. K-guard is my answer. That's it. Because they can't really step around you if you've got the K-guard. You know, they're already high up. You've got them where you want them. So K-guard is my answer. Try to use K-guard. And for all the other people that asked about high stepping, also use K-guard as a defense. There it is. There it is. Get better Otherwise, at K-Guard. You, you can wrestle up as well. You can do like opportunistic wrestle ups, but then you risk getting, you know, your back exposed. You risk getting, because they've got the height, right? You're wrestling up. You've got the double leg. You're just, if you're not that sort of fella where you, you want to go into deep waters, then probably don't do a wrestle up. Okay. There we go. Cool. We'll move on. How much doms is too much doms? Um, where it's just excruciating to do any, everything. So like, let's say what, how you're going to get DOMS is if you're new to, new to training or if you do a new exercise, let's start with being new to training. Don't push too hard to start with. Build, learn the proper technique. Build your way up. Let's say if you've come back from training or if you start a new exercise, don't do it, go too crazy on it. You want, if you go, fuck yeah, I'm going to really give this a good, good crack. And let's say you get to set two and you're like, oh, my legs are fucked. I'm going to be so sore. Then you go, fuck it, I'll do set three. You're going to be absolutely fucked. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> See that happening? Yeah. Fucked. If you're well rested and you come in after a while and you think you're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna fucking tear this apart. You get to set two and you're like, I'm fucking sore, but fuck it, let's go for set three. That's the moment you know you're gonna be the very more sore. you send it. So yeah, you've got to. So in short, the DOMS is determined at the time of doing the weights, not afterwards. Yeah, sometimes when you're doing the weights, you're like, God, I know I'm gonna be sore after this. And like, if you'll know that feeling when it happens because you're already starting to feel a little bit sore. You'll be shaking. Yeah, shaking, and like that's what's going to give you the really fucked up doms. For just normal doms, you could just push a hard session and be like, yeah, I'm going to go for it. And if you're working out regularly, you may get a little bit of doms. Usually when you change exercise, it's called novel gains because it's a new stimulus. Novel. So you'll get some doms, but it shouldn't be excruciating. If you do have excruciating doms, I just recommend you get on, just do some cardio, move. You want to move. Not stretch. Get the blood flow. Get the blood flow going. Get Perhaps try another flowing. workout. Try and do some of that same movement. Get the blood flowing. Exactly. Yeah, get the blood flowing. Go. Next one, I yeah? I get what you're saying. As in, okay. as in next one, yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay. Give me a Jets question. I'll fucking I'll answer it. Okay, go on then. When to play seated versus supine. Do you know what supine means? On your back. I.e. half butterfly versus butterfly. I don't know the answer to that. Give it to me. Well... I was thinking about this when I saw the question earlier. It's to do with their posture, I would say. Like, let's say someone's just walking in. They can walk in standing up tall, or they can walk in. Also, if someone's on... What if they're on knees? What if they're on knees, hunting, staying low, hunting for a body lock? Then I would definitely sit up and keep my head forward. 
It depends if they're actually like if you can. So it depends on their weight. If they're like super heavy, and they're not committing anything, i.e., they're being negative, then I would definitely play butterfly guard. And so it's depending how negative they are. If they're super negative, then you go high sting and butterfly guard. If they're like Sandro, who's not negative, he's on the knees, but he applies weight forward, then you can just kind of counter. Sometimes Sandro will just try and not try and not get subbed for a round, for example, and then I have to play butterfly and high sting. For those fellas who don't know who Sandro is, Sandro's a big, big, fella. big Georgian fella. Yeah. 100 plus kgs very yeah. strong yeah yeah anyway so that's it if he's if he's planning on not getting subbed you've got to do butterfly and uh and what's it going basically the more height you have the more able to be aggressive you are so if you're lying in a half butterfly guard it's good when there's negatives awarded because they're always going to give the top player negatives yeah and they kind of forces them to engage on on you but if it's a sort of sub only format and you're just lying there in half butterfly they might have more opportunities just like picking off your legs from far back so it might be better to sit up and play butterfly also let's say if someone's constantly trying to leg lock you i might just sit up and play butterfly guard so that they don't get your feet because then you you know your hands are protecting your feet so every time they try and grab grab your feet with their hands you, you can get, get their hands and if they grip. try and get their feet inside your legs you get their legs there you go nice fantastic now you answer same i'll do the same you were gonna say that yeah that's what i was gonna right. say cool 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 Cool, cool, cool. I'll get another one for you. Yeah. Tips for body lock slash who's got the best body lock? Instru- you love to body lock. You loved to body lock. I want to get better better at it. I was practicing it today. I can get a good body lock pass, but there's still. I think I'm gonna look at the Nikki. Well, I'm gonna ask you some when we do privates. But I think I'm also gonna probably get the Nikki Rod body lock passing. I, I struggle. No, get the golden one. Okay, I'll do that. Oh, yeah, get the yeah. golden one, fellas. Get the golden one. Yeah, better I mean, exp- the golden one. That's the one. I watched his, I watched his YouTube one. Um, I think I just need to keep practicing. But what I think I guess like a good point that he said that was very useful for me. You'll already know this, but with the grips, so like yeah. finger grips, and you can just constantly upgrade your grips or change your grips depending on the scenario yeah. and how close you want them. So yeah. say like I've got finger grips here. If I'm like okay, I can get actually get a bit closer and I want to pass even tighter. I'll go palm to palm, tight elbow squeeze. Just in the grip. Adjust adjust grips is important punch the elbow down that's going to allow you a bit more room to get your leg over that's what I feel like the Gordon one would show more of more details yeah. changing the grips body lock is just it helped me a lot today to be fair elbow Ch- changing the grips elbow clamping getting the leg out also like you can you can time, get the lock down get the, the hamstring keep the hamstring tight as well there's options where if they try and put you on lockdown get the hamstrings oh, like yeah, tra- trapping their leg love it love it What's yeah. the original question about body locking? Yeah, who's a good one to tips on body lock passing? I would say to body lock with open hands, right? Because most of the problem people have with body locking is the flexibility to step over that knee. Yeah. Yeah. So Get that. if you have S grip, you're going to be more hunched over, so your knee will have less mobility. Mm. And if you have open hands, then you can sit back on sit back to your right side like a chair sit. Let's say you're trying to step over. Yeah, on that's what I did today. I had the, I had the palm to palm. It was way easier. Yeah, we well, got to let go. Just let go of everything. Oh, just, just hold. Just hold with a, a grip here. Put their knee behind your lat and just like crunch. Uh, and then do a chair sit on your right side. And that chair sit will give you the mobility to move your knee over the top. Okay. Rather than staying on both knees. Okay. There you go. Wow. We so, can annotate. So you, we, you, you get that. Then you upgrade the grip. And that nah, would technically nah, downgrade it. Ideally, it would be like an, someone small enough that I can do it with an S grip. But most of the time, if they're your size, it'll be a tight waist. And then the other one will just be hugging their thigh with their knee behind your lap. And then you will just lean back so the knee is away from their chest. And the ability and, to then get the knee coming yeah. over. And you don't lean back square, you lean back seated. Chest so you can, Yeah, so you can swing that over. Got it. That's a fucking good tip. Sick. And what they're going to do most of the time is post on your hip at that point. And at that point, you can take your near side underhook and pass the guard. Uh, that's also a big key. People get to that body lock position. Say they've they've got they've got their knee over. Mm. They've got the head on the other side. They're like, okay. People always what? reaching for the cross face when someone's cross hip posting. But buddy, it's not there. Under underhook the near side, fam. It's so good. So good. You told me that's that a while crazy. ago. Tried that's to get. Did you try? Using, tried a big Dave. Doesn't work on big Dave. Mm, it does. Not for me. It takes a long time. Yeah. It's a lot of like slow progression <clears> followed by a big bridge, and if you. If you fo- follow it correctly, you'll land in a nice position. God. But most of the time, you don't. I'll try you it again with Big I'll keep trying it. All right. Did you get this jacked, Charles, with only two hours weights per week? 
honest question. Um, it didn't actually say your name, but did you know, I get this? Yeah, what a compliment! Thanks so much. No worries, man. Uh, you did, yeah, you did. It was a bit more than two hours per week, but yeah, yeah, it was seventy minutes each session. Yeah, for and weights. Now, now it's like an hour and a half per. Well, because Christian Osbeck comes in and it's just fucking. Maybe it was more intense before, less rest. <clears throat> Maybe no, no, because we always had the stopwatch. I feel like we do more exercises now. Yeah, we got more stuff available in this room for sure. But uh, even like, we used to not do accessories at the end of the accessories. Not as much, no. Yeah. Because we'd, like, we'd spend time talking about technique, learning technique, refining things. There you go. Um, but yeah, you did. That, that's how you, you, you only that did two sessions it. a week. Yeah. For, for all my guys, actually. For, for all the athletes that you see who are jacked on my Instagram and the stories, shout out Big Harry. He's fucking huge. And <laughs> he... <laughs> He only does one session strong per week. Strong too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's quite strong as well. He only does one session per week. That's it. That's nuts. Yeah, but he is training every day. And that's what people forget. Like, mm. they can't, you can't compare. You are a professional athlete. You, you train every single day, maybe one day off, and you eat calories, and you do everything to the T. That's how you get fucking jacked. The uh, Mendes bros, now, instead of doing gym, they just do jujitsu. And they said if they want to, well, obviously there are clips of them doing actual gym back in the day, but now they just, if they want to do deadlifts, I guess they just stack past people all the time. And if they want to do, I don't know, biceps, they'll just armbar defense. Good luck to them, man. Over and over again. I mean, that's kind of crazy when you have like instructors saying that, because that was it sent, what kind of messages that sent to all the I'm pretty sure that was what there was. Rafa said in an interview that now he doesn't go to the gym. He just gets strong through jiu-jitsu so did, so did Lachlan Giles, to be fair. He, he said he, he had an interview with Craig. Craig Lachlan Giles doesn't really stretch, doesn't really lift weights. You don't, you don't have to lift weights. You don't have to. Is it going to help? Yes, it's going to help you a lot. For many yeah. of the reasons we've chatted about before, it's going to help you be... It will help you get a lot stronger. The main thing people fuck up is technique doing things too early like let's say you get to a deadlift or a squat that, and you fuck up the technique you don't learn proper technique you're oh yeah i can just keep adding load 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 it's not about that weight mm -hmm. like weight it's not mm -hmm. about constantly lifting heavier stuff what i say to my guys is i want you to be able to do this forever so just take it slowly work as hard as you can on that day like you should really only be pushing to a seven to eight out of ten sometimes work up to a nine out of ten on an exercise where you're not going to fucking hurt yourself yeah. for jiu-jitsu fellas and that really honestly that's what you should be doing your thoughts good tip um so yeah for me no nah, i don't really have any thoughts on that lifting is necessary if you want to be better than your opponent there you go <laughs> true. simply you get more goes at the moves you want to do that's why people juice same reason you'd lift yeah there you go they juice and lift but they juice and lift yeah but yeah. but yeah cool uh all right so next cool. one tips for someone that starts teaching privates private lessons i imagine be a good coach be a good coach be on time sometimes be joke, joke, jokes aside be punctual yeah. organize sessions professionally i think within five minutes is the normal Thing. If it's over five, you've got to be like, buddy, I'm, I'm late. Yeah, mate, I'm sorry I'm running late. If you know you're going to be late, sorry, mate, I'm running late. But other than that, actual tips for teaching privates, I would say start with as many privates as you can and then start to raise your prices because probably just want to get good at teaching first and talking to people and not being weird about it. And then... 100%. You because know, I'm like severely autistic. So when people would come, I'd just be like, hi. And then I'd look at the floor and then maybe I'd get them to shake my mum's hand or something before <laughs> mine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah. I, I'm cured now, uh, and yeah, it's much better. So I would say start with as many as possible. You will learn how to teach, and you'll probably learn what is most effective and what is too complicated. You know, what also just different people learn different ways. Some people you've got to speak to them with and give them info, and some people the info just goes way over their head. So you just got to show them with the move. Yeah. It's actually fucking good advice. Mm. Don't start being like, I'm gonna fucking charge everyone top rates. Yeah, because realistically... You're going to be shit. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be shit, but also... You just want bodies. You want to teach... Like, mm. yeah, mate, I agree with all your points. Great. All right, we'll move on then. Yeah. All right, fine. 
Fucking hell. All right. Uh, there was another question. Favorite option when your opponent sits to a hip when you try to use K-Guard? <laughs> we love this question. I fucking love this question. Stand up and just fucking put him in a headlock. Uh, don't you normally... Yeah, I was trying that, Freddie. I did get the pass on Freddie Daddy Stress twice with that Fantastic. today. Fantastic. What an amazing result. Yeah. I think people Pretty are good. forecasting it. Um, you want to hear it one more time? No, go. You answer. People people in K-Guard that sit down. So I would do a backwards roll and stand up. And that's, that's God, the honest truth. honest truth. Really? I would do a backwards roll. Like, if they fully sit to their ass. Just out of the blue, you've got your underhook here. They sit down. You're going to get americana buddy. So I would go to my right shoulder. And then, you know, if they continue sitting down, I'll just basically stand up, hold, do a backwards roll, holding their leg. And yeah. And once you do that, maybe you won't have such a tight grip because, you know, you just did a backwards roll. So from that position, I wouldn't expect to get a clean takedown. I would then expect to wrestle or worst Scramble. case scenario, they've stood up whilst you've been doing your backwards roll. But you now have opportunity to enter the legs again. Great. Thanks for listening. Great, man. To that other portion. I'll listen to that. I'm listening to it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. After three Wait weeks for off. This. Hold on one sec. Hold on. Uh, yeah, the red camera. Yeah, it's a cool, cool, cool. All right. After three weeks. After th <laughs> After three, three weeks off with an injured rib, my jiu-jitsu got better. Have you experienced this before? Yeah. Depends how hard you're training beforehand. Let's say he was training like a savage beforehand. Lots and lots and lots. Now he took some rest. Hmm. Even though he's injured, he's still, his body's still resting. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say he's probably had time to think, like compartmentalize about things. Maybe he's maybe, maybe he's been watching some jiu-jitsu while he's injured as well. Yeah, and he's come back and he's thought like pragmatically. Okay, so what Dan at our post about that was saying like losing bad habits. Give it to me. Losing bad habits. That's what he's saying. Yeah, by think, watching things, being like, I did that. I shouldn't do that. Yeah, maybe coming back to well, not even consciously, but just coming back and maybe something that you do that's a bad habit you just didn't do, and then you just forget all about it. But I guess that could happen with good habits too. Yeah, so you got to have all your wits about you. And you when you come back, you've got to come back as as you mean to go on. I have experienced that though. Uh, like, let's say I took some time off, but I've been watching some jiu-jitsu, thinking about jiu-jitsu, I've come back and I'm like, oh, I'm actually better than I was before I, was, before I got injured. Mm. I've had that. Have you had that? Yeah, maybe it's just your brain is less foggy after all the days off. And yeah, it could be that you're just enjoying it more so you feel like you're better, but actually you're not more efficient. That's another thing. You should join my Yeah, That's yeah. True. Like, are you. So, this is. When I come back from an injury, my first session, I'll always feel good. But nowadays, because this happens so often, I'll just basically not try very hard at all on the first session. Like, really consciously try not to try hard. Because otherwise, A, you get injured. B, the next day, you're just fucked. Because you didn't realize how hard you trained that day and doms like, mega doms and yeah. mega doms when is mega doms too much doms that's then. that's when yeah then uh so yeah if you i mean if you think you're doing really well one session just consider can i do this session every single day or can i do this plus another two sessions every single day if not then you're probably overdoing that session underdoing steroids mm. shout out that Shh. guy that said i was on steroids yeah yeah that's, that's lots it. of people no, that was a recent one. Are you on steroids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. I like... Uh, Clan? Clan Barol. Yep. Yeah. Shout out ways to well. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can't wait to be well. Yeah. Uh, okay. Way too well. Can I do weights an hour before BJJ if I don't go mad? I'd say... It's pushing it, but yeah. Yeah, you can, of course you can. But your risk of injury is going to be significantly higher than if you did it the other way around if you do significantly higher you think about how much stress and like i kind of do that though yeah but you're not training hard so you yeah, you, yeah. you do this and then you go insane. teach a class and then you're not going to go but most of the time in the class it's warm up or technical drill followed by sparring after that 45 to an hour of technical drills you should be that's another two hours since weights so yeah. if you're going directly into sparring one hour after weights Doesn't you're going to get injured but yeah simply you Sim are you will finished but yeah. Uh, you're finished. Shout out Mohammed Hijab, uh, official. If you are, 
waiting like two hours and you've got a bit of warm up period between you ate well you hydrated well and you start really slow then yeah you can work Lovely. very nicely there very you nicely indeed and you can make hella gains in both weights and you get to Boy gates. you should start the podcast man uh, I actually did go on other podcasts shout uh, out who is that yeah, shout out yeah it was called the grappling hour shout out grappling hour Raf Esparza that's Sick. I can't believe I remembered that. Come on. Come on. Come on, Raf Fuck, I already answered that. When you go over back grip, God. fuck, how do you prevent them going octopus guard? Go on, go on, go on, because you like it now. I love it over, over back grip. Do you? Do you yeah. actually use it? Yeah. Yeah, play. I do. When we, we yeah. did that round up with Christian, Christian got stuck. He couldn't get out. Oh, man, he was, it was so it. funny. He was, was so angry. It was so funny. It was so funny. He, he was so angry. actually couldn't do anything. <laughs> it was actually quite funny. Actually quite funny. <laughs> that was really funny. That was funny. You're going to like this. Um, so you go over back. Yep. They sit up and try and go octopus guard. Yep. What do you do? I'm probably just going to try and stand up, to be honest. Or just J-point. Just J-point. Just J-point the fuck out of <laughs> try there. Try to get the hand in. Yeah, I, I love doing J-point. What do you do? I would cross face them. <laughs> oh, as they're standing up. No, so they go octopus behind. Let's say you. Oh, in, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand that. What would you do? Cross face them too. I probably cross face. I cross. I love a fucking cross so, face. Yeah, they're they're behind you. So bear in mind, you know, you can't. Re- you gotta just fish out the front of their nose. You know this bit. Of their nose, the filtrum. If you. Oh, will. can you go? I'd go like hand to hand cross face. Yeah, but some, sometimes you need your hand there to post on the floor. You post your hand on the floor. They're yeah. reaching around for your lap. Yeah. They're trying to put weight on your right hand, so you can't you can't move that right hand. You're yeah, gonna yeah. fall. Mm. So you gotta keep that there. Fish out this part of their nose with. This uh, part of your knuckle yeah. and start to turn their face so the octopus guard loses power. Jo- Honestly, jo- jokes I don't aside, rate it. Uh, I don't rate the octopus. octopus aside. Nah, jokes aside, it. that's actually what I'll try and do. I'll try and like get them. Yeah, fish, fish out their straight. face, and then once you get it, yeah. sometimes it's not enough to go one hand. You can't really walk up because you're right at the end. You don't have enough fingers to walk. But that's when you can S grip and just flare that elbow. Yeah. Watch Giancarlo versus that the in the Aga Global. He was passing one of the one of the fellas from the local teams basically and uh <laughs> and yeah he used he used that s grip cro- and honestly he must have cross faced the guy for like 40 seconds before the guy's face turned so never lose hope when you're in a cross face you're gonna you, fair play they will their face will run out of time you know <laughs> you get it. it really will your neck their, their neck will get fucking tired yeah, they'll get tired first and you'll just be there resting and flexing your arm on their face true also thoughts on direct hip flexor training with monkey fleet slash kensui anchor or reverse squats with a low pulley I don't what rate the any of that. Fuck is Kensui anchor? I don't know what. It, uh, it's basically some kind of like strap that goes here, and you can lift your foot up. I don't rate any of that, to be honest. I just feel like it just hurts when I do that sort of training. Uh, for just, like what? Th- it's gonna be around him. What happens is you get these fucking you get these guys who fucking pricks. don't really fucking, fucking do jujitsu, and they'll be like, shit. "Yeah, you train your hip flexors directly, or do this exercise directly." It's like, mate, yeah. We're not going to name names, but do you really train jiu-jitsu that fucking hard and understand how much of a toll that's going to have on your body? Yeah. You don't need to be training these things absolutely directly. Touch the nerve. Yeah. Great. You don't need to be doing that. But what you can do them fuck them up. is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get good at L-sits. If you want to get really strong hip flexors, do some L-sit progression. So you can lie on the floor, you can have your leg nice and straight, and you can lift it up over a weight. Then you can get mm. progress that by going to both legs, lifting that up. Then you can progress to holding yourself on bars, bent knee, straightening the leg out. Then you can progress that to both legs, nice and straight. Go on the RuneScape. Play RuneScape. Play RuneScape. Just hold the laptop here with your feet, and then that's it. Yeah. Joke aside, I and the the reverse um, the reverse Nordic is actually pretty fucking good. Uh, I used to be able to, like do quite a lot of them. So like, say you say you're on your knees and your hips are pushed forward and like okay, your butt's off you, and you, your le- and you lean forward. backwards. No, you lean backwards. So you get the, your back of your head's going to touch the floor. What's a sissy squat? A sissy squat is when you're on your toes and you're going to squat like ass to grass. Okay, right. I think it is. A si- or or your, your feet are in something and you squat like it's basically a, a way to, to get your uh, quads fired up. Yeah, the I reverse that that the reverse Nord- no, okay, the reverse yeah. Nordic is going to hit your hip flexors and your quads. Hella quad, hella quad. Hella quad. But quad. I don't. I wouldn't train your hip flexors that directly. I think getting like getting really good look like, and else getting really good L sits is fucking excellent. 
because not only is that going to get your hip flexors and quads very strong, but it's also going to get your lower abs, which we know is so important for getting your knees to chest. I love those. Uh, getting really strong abs. Toast to bar. Very, toast to bar is excellent. Toast to bar. Toast to bar. But you need, I'd get a really good L-sit and that's going to help your toast to bar. Toast to bars. Is it an ass cheek exercise as well? Hamstrings too, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Because you've got to not wobble, eh? If you want to do it as strict as possible, it's abs, hamstrings, quads, hip but flexors. But not wobbling is the hardest. You've got to think about it. It's not yeah. just go. And if you if you have the if you have the choice, you have those bars that stack on top of each other. You, you hold yourself on there, and then when you come back up, you, your spine is going to bend. You have no leverage to cheat. I don't understand. So, like, let's say, like, you're on that straight bar. It's like playing clay, clay tennis. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Why didn't you say that? Anyway, you've got the straight bars. And it's preventing your back from, you know, kipping. Ah, so okay. let's say I'm stuck there and I go to toes the bar. Eventually my hips are going to lift off. So I have to curl more with my abs yeah. to reach that. Whereas if I'm just on a normal bar, I can maybe lean back a little bit to the upper back ah, to okay. get the toes the bar. Yeah, Whereas I if I'm stuck so. here, I guess, the abs yeah. have to curl. I actually said the wrong thing before I said the spine doesn't. But anyway. Right. I get you now. That Move was on. well explained the second time around. Clay tennis. When you lift weights, do you try and concentrate on your deep love for male physiques? Actually, no. in a way, mm, I love my muscle that I'm working, whatever it is. That's pretty gay. Yeah. yeah. Like if I'm doing a bicep curl, I'm not just thinking about male physiques. I'm thinking about a specific bicep, my bicep. Is that gay to think it. about your own it's bicep? It's mildly gay to think about your own bicep. Yeah, okay. So you work the bicep, ah, oh, it hurts. But you're not thinking about, you know, Other whatever ends. fruit yeah. pastry you're going to eat later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that cup. hurts. Oh, God, look at that bicep. Oh, that, that looks hurts. good. Ah, oh, that hurts. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> anyway, that's what I think about um, you. It apparently helps if you really try and focus on feeling your muscle. Not mind muscle connection that's true it takes time yeah. to build that up yeah yeah that's why some exercises are hard at first because you're like what is this even doing like, <laughs> I don't feel a thing that's why technique is, takes a long time to learn because you need to understand mm. where your body is in space yeah kinesthetic learning would you prefer to train someone who's never done anything ever yep. or to train someone who's only done tennis uh tennis really but what if they've got loads of bad habits They'll pick things up pretty easy if they're pretty like if they're really good at tennis, or just like they've just done like hobbyist tennis. Yeah, like one person who's like able and fit, but has just never done more than like normal office worker job. I picked up things. two clients recently. One was like a office worker. He has never trained in a. He's never really done weights in his life. He's an excellent client because you teach him from scratch. You teach them how to hinge, how to squat properly, and you just build them up from the ground up. Yeah. They're, they're my favorite clients. If I, can, if I can get someone who's never done weights before, uh, that's amazing. Would you say they learn it quicker than someone who's done another sport? Uh, no, some has it normal movement. It depends. Sometimes people who have done sport, it's like it's very dependent, isn't it? Some people who have done sport have really good you know, kinesthetic awareness of where they are and what they need to do. Although sometimes it surprises you. Some, some people who have done a lot of sport, they're like, what are you, how well, are I you moving? I think it makes it worse sometimes, like, a lot of what is good jiu-jitsu posture would not be necessarily the same. I guess it would be the same, but like not, not really. We, lots of sport will have different, lots of different shapes that they'll get into, mm. and they, they may have an understanding of how to get in and out of that shape, which may help with cueing. Whereas someone who's an absolute noob, again, they may pick up cues well, they may not. Yeah. It all depends on how good your cues are. And then, uh, then that happens with good coaching and you having lots of experience coaching, Do finding out coaching. what cues working. Cheap privates. Yep. Cool, 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 cool. All right, we're moving on now. Late stage Kimura escapes from side. From side? Get your, get your head out from between their legs. Uh, fuck, <laughs> I mean... Hold inside your leg and try to walk your hand back to the inside of your body. I and mean, once your hand is behind your back, you, it's not You're it's not looking very good, really. And you have to try and get your other hand connected to your... Surely that's attacking. done. That's done. I mean, yeah, but if you can get your other hand in front of your body to grab the, that hand, yeah, and pull it back, then you can you can salvage it. But once your hand's behind your back, I mean, it's, it's not looking good until you get it back in front of you, buddy. So there... All right, let's move on. Uh, have you felt a noticeable difference? Fuck, we answered that as well. 
Are we doing the super fight in Georgia? I will break you in half. Uh, this is from Sandro. Uh, Sandro. 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 Yep. Sandro. So, this is some fun news. Let's see if it happens. Sandro. Don't know how to say his last name. Tedzadzi. Tedzaki. Good friend of mine. Big I Georgian fella. Tzatziki. Tzatziki. He I is actually Greek, isn't he, San- Sandro? It's, or Turkish or something. something Sandro, like yeah. yeah. Big Sandro. We're good friends. And we are going to have a super fight in Georgia. And I'm going to beat him. On his home turf. In front of his family front and of his friends. Honestly, literally. He's got some grandparents who aren't very well. <laughs> and they'll be watching too. <laughs> they'll be watching. They'll be watching. And I'm going to beat him in Georgia. This uh, is this is not a joke, by the way. We're actually, yeah, this we're, might actually happen in this, January. This might so. actually happen in January in Georgia. I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna train very hard for it. He probably won't need to train too hard for it. You'll be training up to two or three times a week, right? I will be You're training. It's pretty seriously, bro. <laughs> I will be training three to four times a week for this. Lifting three times a week, cardio once per week. But it's not going to be a big cardio affair for me. It's going to be a technical. How I'm going to win is it's by tech- be a technical jousting. But shout out to him. Yeah, jousting. Yeah. Shout out to him. He's got to make 95 kgs. So we're going to fight at 95. I'm going to cut two kgs. He's going to cut. Are more you 97? Than two kgs. Yeah, 97, 98. What the bloody. What the. What the. Yeah, what big the f- cunt. Must I be. Am. Must be all the. See, so yeah, that'll be fun. Georgia, January. All right. First comp soon. Been training five months. Any advice for a fat lad fighting in the 97 kilo <laughs> category? I just like they call himself fat. How about you lose some weight, you fat piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fat cunt. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, nah, don't, don't, give that'd be, that'd don't be so. Give up. That'd don't be horrible. Nah, that'd be so horrible. You, 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 Why have you been horrible? You can't be fat if you've been training five months. All right. Fighting in the 97 kilo cat. I would say if get yourself a guard that is actually effective at, at rolling people over and you will become the best fat cunt anyone's ever seen in the white belt division for sure yeah if you exi- think about it think about it buddy like you're fine when you're on top and you're fine when you're wrestling but if you're on bottom it's basically over unless you can just bridge and roll them so if you get something slightly above a bridge and roll but that still uses your ridiculously excessive weight by the way it's the same weight as you then that would be <laughs> the perfect way to start your white belt career true i hope he watches this he will he cool. asked the question same weight as me same weight as you yeah so Maybe you should do some deep half too. I know a guy. Cooper. Jim Cooper. Sandra. Just fucking get good Sandra at crushing. Do guard. Sandra does not do guard. Hard to get him on guard. Uh, most annoying things that people do during training. I didn't really circle that, but now I've read it. I trying to think Poor hygiene. Smell bad. Me. Yeah, that's not really annoying. Spazzing really hard. Yeah. Accidental headbutts. People, I don't know. People who annoy you. <laughs> <laughs> What's that show again? Countdown. South Park. I love Countdown. <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer. <laughs> uh, Give me a fucking answer. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm trying to think what actually annoys me that doesn't just... Uh, is Things used to annoy me that I now enjoy quite a lot. Things like spazzing and, and like people, people being... People like let's say headbutting you or just random things that would annoy me but now I realise it's just like a grown man having a tantrum <laughs> now it's hard to now find you troll them now it's not annoying yeah now I actually really like it I'm trying to think what is annoying what's annoying is people who hmm disengages yeah even disengaging though it's quite, it's almost fun because it's like this is this is really good training now because I, I need to I need to troll them as I hard as I can. Yeah, I need to not troll them. I need to actually finish. It's much harder to finish someone when they're stalling. So it's actually better training than like someone who just goes after you. It's it's good training because you get a lot of subs or whatever. You you get get to go through the positions, but you're not really working the tactical, you know, sharpness and dealing with the stallers. Fair play, yeah. Uh, yeah, people that annoy people that annoy me are people that that go retardedly hard, and then as soon as things don't go their way, like way before you get a sub, they tap. Like they, uh, yeah. they're super dangerous to you, but there's no risk of them ever getting injured. Like a I guy so who just keeps flying scissoring until eventually he's on the floor and you're on top, and then he just taps. He goes, "Now nah, let's just start again." Yeah, I tap, I tap, nah, nah, I'm t-. like, and then he just stands up and starts People flying scissoring you again. <laughs> now there's one one fella who's basically done that, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, what is wrong with people? It's just a small brain, I guess. It's just like through growing up, maybe some sort of lacking school or just general socialization and uh yeah then they just go to jujitsu and think 
that. Cool. This happened to a friend of mine recently. If you, if you horrifically injured someone in the gym, he Let's was see. he he was <laughs> he, did, he, he was horrifically injured, and you saw them again in the gym, you would go up to them and be like, "Man, I'm so sorry about the injury. Is everything okay? Right?" You yeah. Were. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah At yeah. the time, I'd probably. This person didn't. Can you believe that? I don't think he came back to the gym, did he? He horrifically injured he someone. He went back to the gym and he didn't. He didn't even say anything to this person. Nothing. Didn't say. Just, just apparently, just ignored him. <laughs> Crazy. Don't do that to people. If you, if you injure, not even horrifically. If you just, if you injure someone in the gym, they're your training partners. They're your mates. Even if they're not your mate, but like, be like, fuck, you should check up on them, mate. Is everything okay? Yeah, you kind of owe it to them. Even if you don't like them, you've got to at least cover your own yeah. your own back and give them a DM or something. And yeah. I don't know. Send a message, them. mate, it's all good. <laughs> no. Mate, all good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good. Uh, anyway, at least next time, yeah, anyway, at least next time you see them, mate, is everything okay? You're all good. All good? All good? All good. And no. they go, yeah, 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 it's all good, thanks, thanks. Yeah, all good, mate. There yeah. you go, that's it. You've not really, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Common courtesy. But yeah, the initial question was what? Uh, things that annoy me. Uh, People yeah. that annoy me. What else? Uh, Let's move on. We can, we can get more out of this podcast, I think. Uh, yeah, I feel like we didn't, we didn't really, there are so many things. Why don't you go to Owen's cast, Owen's gym, scaredy pants? He's uh, talking to you. He's calling you a fucking terrified pants. We need to do sp- trousers. Sp- sp- why? Yeah, why don't I go to Owen's gym? Because I work early in the mornings. I have clients usually. No, not usually. I have clients at 6 a.m. Monday to Friday. And training in the evening, it just doesn't work for me. Should we get like some it. YouTube questions up? Did we even get any YouTube questions? Uh, go on, let's have a little look at the last There's one. actually some funny comments in the most recent one. There were one. some great comments. I only put it up uh, yesterday. The podcast with Vine and Maggie in the Gi is coming you imagine how ter- terrible that would be? <laughs> why, why would you say that? They're pretty funny. They're pretty funny. They're, they're really funny. They're really funny. The girls are funny. They are. What cues would you use when teaching someone with no lifting background to hinge correctly with a bar? Um, I would say, this is what I do. I go, I get them some dumbbells. First of all, I teach them the floating heel so they're standing on their midfoot floating heel uh hip hinge because it's just the, for some, whatever reason if they're floating off the heel on two feet and you get them into a hip hinge it's just easier for them to understand uh how to push their hips back and keep the same knee position but what i would say to that person because a lot of people fuck this up if they don't have lift rifting experience you go okay mate what we're going to do we're going to have it start with a soft bend in the knees and they're going to slightly bend their knees and you go you're going to push your hips to the back of the room. Imagine you're closing a car door with your bum and they'll do a couple and they'll fuck it up and you go, okay, 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 let's do this now. Let's go a soft bend in the knee and now that knee angle is not gonna change at all as you're pushing your hips back. And you'll watch that. Uh, maybe I should do a video about this. It depends on the exercise, surely. We're talking, about, remaining, all about, hin- we're yeah. talking about hinging and remaining deadlifts. That's RDLs, it, that's it. I would say, would you not go into like a full hamstring stretch? Because for me, that was the main thing is like actually feeling my, my hamstring is being stretched and yep. then unstretched. Yeah. So, so we're talking about getting there though. Because a lot of yeah. people just hunch over or they'll get, get into that and they'll just really bend their knees and go to a squat. So you go, okay, mate, let's, mm. just, let's first of all just get that hamstring, that position with a soft bend in the knees. Then they'll go down to that position and you go, okay, we're going to stay in this position, that, that hinge position now. Straighten your legs a little bit and you go, Oh, you feel your hamstrings now? And they go, yeah, I feel my hamstrings now. And you go, okay, now push the floor waist down up. And then we go, let's get back to that same position. There it is. How to train people to train their hinging Yeah, it's, it, it's hard. So if, I was, if I'm teaching a deadlift now, you start from the top down. You go, okay, mate, we're going to step into the bar and we're going to go shoelaces underneath the bar. Now, before you pick the bar up, don't just bend over. Imagine you've already done one deadlift. Imagine you're holding the bar at the top now. Now lower yourself down into the bottom position and that's going to allow them to start in a better position because so many people, when they do the deadlift, they fuck up the first one and then after that, the reps are really good. So for the first one, it makes sense to go start at the top and let's pretend we've already done one so we get into a good position sick that's crazy that's all the questions Fucking answered crazy. in the world we should finish that it's 50 minutes that's enough what happened to your eye 
Uh, I got a headbutt. Rings? Headbutt. Yeah, I was. Was that the head? No, I was doing something on the rings earlier, and I just swung into. Yeah, I swung into the rings. No, shout out our tourists. Uh, we did some training today. I got some body lock passing, and then I went to do another body lock pass, and then I can't remember what happened, but we clashed heads. Uh, got a big cut but luckily 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 we had a trained doctor and medic on site Christian Osbeck and he was able to to uh, to patch this up for me actually you don't really call surgeons doctor in the UK they just they just call mister is that so yeah if it's a surgeon you just call him mister oh okay yeah orthopedic surgeon Christian Osbeck he's actually got a clinic uh, he's got a few clinics in actually. Street, doesn't he just check out Fortius uh, clinic in oh sorry Christian in Mayfair yeah. and yeah, he's also got some DVDs on repair, Judo? on no on, on like foot and ankle mobility. If you just type in David Gray rehab, <laughs> uh, that's his alias. That's <laughs> that's just him. No, sorry, that's his men- that's that was his calls, mentee. He me- he, he mentored David Gray. Uh, right. he, maybe yeah. Oh, no, just, no, sorry, he calls, he the, calls system. the system David Gray. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he's, yeah. Got it. Have a look. Yeah. So luckily he was there, so he could patch me up. Uh, few, few guys. Remember, like and subscribe to this podcast if you've enjoyed this. 51 minutes, like, subscribe, this YouTube. Was just a, it went fast This for me. was a I shambles, mean, wasn't it? Yeah, what well, a mess. Still leave a like, though, because, yeah. Leave a like. We'll get like. money. Buy your DVD. Outside passing, inside passing. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Let's do a proper one for the yeah. mandem. Yeah. Done no yeah. Fuck yeah. Done no. Buy DVDs, Done get strength programs, Done do all Done that. Done. Good to see you guys. See you later.